Alright, hey everyone. Uh, today I want to talk about anti-dead zones, and um, I'm going to use do that by showing the script I wrote for the a uh, Titan 2. Uh, of course, this exists in other adapters, and I want to speak more generally about uh, anti-dead zones. But uh, for those unaware, a dead zone is a region within the center of a thumbstick or any kind of joystick. Uh, that doesn't output any movement. So, for example, if the dead zone is 20%, uh, you'd have to move the stick at least that far before you start seeing the camera or character start moving. Any movements below that, uh, nothing would happen. An anti-dead zone is just the opposite. Like A lot of games don't offer um, dead zone size options, so players will use either adapters or some kind of software that lets them uh, counter these dead zones and lower them, and that's really all that it's doing. And I'll be demonstrating a few types here. Um, unfortunately, I don't have nice before and after um, graph. So uh, what you can see here is the normal stick input, and when I hold uh, left bumper, uh, you'll see the script activate. And the script is active, but um, the only thing by default uh, in my script is that it caps the outer dead zone range, and it's just uncapped right now. So otherwise everything else is default. But uh, getting on with it, so the first option is a dead zone option. So using an extreme example, you can see this is the stick input, and this is stick output. So if I move the stick 30%, then I'll output 0%. So this is a way to add a dead zone, and um, to demonstrate that, I'll use 0.3, I'll put that, and so this is their normal stick input, and when I activate the script, this is what it looks like. So um, you don't start seeing movement occur until I'm past 30%. If it's not past that yet, then nothing happens. So normal input uh, with the script, and you can see it wobble a bit because I'm making circles that are a little over 30%. So that's how that works. Now, anti-circular dead, anti dead zone anyway uh, works in exactly the opposite way. So if I move the stick anywhere over 0%, I'll output 30%. So um, let's just switch the values. So this is, I'm just making tiny little circles like I was before. And then when I activate the script, make much larger circles because you can see that the values are basically teleporting to over 30 percent. And as you can see, this is, this is the script, and then releasing the button, this is the normal input. Script, normal button. So that essentially counters that 30 percent dead zone. And of course I can use very um, granular values, but I'm just using these examples as extreme examples to show this. So anti-square dead zone, um, square dead zones and circular dead zones are the most common, but uh, with square dead zones, uh, you can see how there's this cross here, and um, this kind of inner square is where the actual dead zone is. So if you move your stick anywhere in here, uh, you won't see any, any cursor movement happen. If you move your dead zone anywhere in here or any of the other arms, you'll see perfect cardinal movement. So right here, I'll be moving perfectly, I would be moving perfectly right if the square dead zone was applied. Um, so what this script does is skip over these regions, so it just outputs into these areas. So let's demonstrate that. So I can move my stick normally, like I'm, I'm moving right here. But you'll notice once I press the button and activate the script, it's teleporting around in like a square shape. So it's following the same um, thing the graph hopefully shows. And you'll see the outer dead zones kind of moved out a bit. That's um, square dead zones kind of warp the outer dead zone a bit, and this is no different. So, but you'll see I'm moving the stick, this is, this is normal input, uh, just around the axes, but you'll see it's skipping that. So you're completely jumping over any restricted diagonal movement that the square dead zone's creating. 
and you're just outputting into the little square regions of diagonal movement. So that's how that works. Now, the outer dead zone, there's an input and an output. The input, I'll use extreme example, so um, if I input up to 80%, I'm going to output 100%. Uh, the usefulness of this is if your st stick fails to output uh, fully, um, you'll normally find yourself uh, cut off from certain values. So uh, you can miss the acceleration ranges or you just can't output at full speed for whatever uh, game you're playing. So as you can see I'm moving about 80% and I'm outputting at 100%. And um, of course it scales, so if I move 50% normally, I'll, I'll, or if I move out of 40% uh, normally, which is halfway to 80, um, I'll be moving about 50%. So that just scales like that. And um, again, it's useful for, um, if you've heard in the, like, the Halo community, they'll say slow turn, and that's because they can't, their stick is failing to reach the acceleration range. Uh, it's useful for that. Uh, what tends to be more useful uh, for most players, because most players' sticks are registering properly, is the output outer dead zone. So this is just, of course, the mirror of that. So if you output your stick input 100%, you only get out 80%. And the usefulness for that is if you want to avoid any acceleration zones. So to demonstrate, uh, if I move my stick 100%, I only get 80% in this case. If I move my stick 50%, I get 40%. So it just scales like that. And uh, yeah, the usefulness is uh, if you if there's a threshold where you, you know if you're aiming and there's a g giant acceleration spike that might be uncomfortable for some players, uh, you can use this to um, force your stick short of that, so you never have to. Uh, reach that acceleration jump. Uh, okay, and then the next option is the degree. So this lets you change the output curve. So using values over than one will output faster and allow you to counter any game's curve. So if a game um, uses a quadratic curve, uh, using this, this is actually a square root curve, um, this will count cancel it into a linear curve. So let's apply that. Let's first oops, get rid of this and get rid of this. Okay. So what this does is you can see I'm moving my stick about 25% of the way. When I enable the script, I'm moving 50% so it's outputting faster than it normally would so here I am making normal stick movements and when I activate the script you can see they're larger it's, it's not teleporting like it was before but it's outputting much faster and let's just do the opposite for uh, example sake so change this to so this is actually outputting a quadratic curve and you can see that I can make these let's make just larger adjustments and then when I enable the script it's much smaller adjustments so it's outputting much slower than it was before so if you feel like the game's curve is too fast you can use this to slow it down now lastly is the anti or angular anti and uh, much like the square dead zone restricts diagonal movement around the axes, uh, some games uh, do this, but specifically by angle. So if your stick was in one of these regions, it would in this in this case over here, it'd be moving perfectly right, uh, perfectly down, perfectly left, perfectly up, or whatever. So um, this would counter that and let you just skip right over those ranges. So let's um, let's use the extreme example, 45, and the graph's not made perfectly, so uh, forgive that. Uh, and use 45. 
So here's your normal stick input, uh, just passing through the axes normally. But when with the script enabled, you can see that it teleports right over these regions. So if these regions are restricted down diagonal movement, you would skip straight over them. So yeah, I'm just making this, this back to normal stick input, just wobbling right around the axes, and you can see those movements with the script active um, teleport you right around this. So um, that's how these options work. Of course, I'm um, I've been demonstrating them one by one, but these work in tandem with each other. So, for example, uh, if a game used a square dead zone of 30%, uh, you counter the square dead zone. But of course, if you're moving 0% and countering uh, it, the dead zone fully, that's essentially playing at a 0% dead zone. So you might not want that. You might want to play with 20% or something like that. And what you could do is use this to add it on. As you can see here, you will move your stick 30% and then immediately counter it. On the curve graph, um, it doesn't really look like anything actually happened, but uh, except for you, you lose whatever is in here. But importantly for this example, if you're um, creating a circular dead zone, so you're moving out of the dead zone circular, as soon as you break out of this, it counters the square dead zone. And uh, what that essentially does, it makes you feel like you're using a circular dead zone um, when the game actually uses a square dead zone because once you exit the dead zone it immediately counters the square um, so you don't feel the restricted diagonal movement and you don't feel this inner square. So if anyone's familiar with Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 2 used a square dead zone and players uh, were upset because it restricts your diagonal movement and you kind of snap into these ranges. Um, but some people made a fix through like uh, Dudazno or uh, X360 uh, CE, uh, some script program, and uh, they countered it. So that turned essentially turned the square dead zone into a circular dead zone, and you would essentially be doing that like this. And I only have one example I'm going to show. But uh, the example I'm going to show is kind of a combination of a lot of these things. Is I just put an overlay. This is for the original Red Dead. It's a pretty ugly looking dead zone. You can see it's kind of squarish, uh, restricts a ton of diagonal movement around the axes. So to counter this, uh, we're going to use uh, these settings. So we're going to use 25, 20, and uses about uh, 40 for this so I mean that this this isn't made well but as you can see it kind of mimics uh, what the overlay looks like what the um, what red deads that zone looks like so when we apply this you can see this is normal stick input so you can see I can make giant movements and I wouldn't be breaking out of the dead zone so this makes, it would make things feel really clunky and, and the game is really clunky as a result of that and I can make giant movements like this and I'd be moving perfectly left in this case and perfectly right so that's pretty rough but when I uh, trigger the script uh, these small little, this, this normal stick movement, these small little movements s immediately skip these and you can see that it's skipping right around these restricted diagonal regions so I'm making just movements like this, this is normal stick movement and with the script, it's just skipping straight by that. And of course, if I want to give another example, um, I can edit the de degree. So I'll, I'll move this so it's slower. And this properly scales um, as it should to to these specific regions. So, okay, normal stick input and it starts out slower so I'm making pretty wide movements but it's outputting slower in these regions so from here to here that's where the curve is changing and as an opposite example I'll go back to oops, change that I'll run that and I'll just change this to make uh, to illustrate that so again normal movements but as you can see it's starting the curve is moving faster so it's a little more difficult to make these uh, very small um, 
movements, but this would counter whatever curve it's using or make it faster. So hopefully that was a um, good enough demonstration for some uh, for people. So this is how um, any dead zones specifically work, how you can uh, alter the curve, um, these restricted active movements, and, and all that kind of stuff. And if, you're, uh, if you have a Titan 2, uh, you're free to use um, the script. It's called like dead zone, anti-dead zone, and curve manipulation, or something, something similar to that. Um, but just in general, uh, I, I want to talk about uh, its application for consoles, because uh, when you buy a Titan 2 or some other uh, device to do this, I mean, that's, that's, it's great, okay, you can counter games, curves, and stuff like that, but it is essentially like a hundred dollar or more paywall to be able to do this, when, I mean, ideally, games would al already offer these options. So aside from developers adding these options so anti-dead zones and this kind of stuff aren't even necessary, I think it'd be really good for um, the console manufacturers like like Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft to offer these kinds of things. Because when you look at, say, the Elite controller or the Nacon controllers uh, for uh, Microsoft and Sony, respectively, um, they do have like curve options, but um, they're pretty crude. Like the Nacon ones can give you like a linear piecewise, which can do can do a decent amount, but they're stuck to specific increments, so you can't really directly counter anything. And when you look at the Xbox's curve options, um, the curve really doesn't start changing until about 25%, which means it can't really do anything about countering dead zones b below it. So, I mean, despite what people say, you can't actually counter dead zones with that controller. So, uh, I think it's kind of a a wasted opportunity for those controllers to offer that, but it's something that all players could have access to because there's really no reason that you would have to hide those kinds of settings behind a, buying a special controller because uh, normal players can use that. When you look at the accessibility options for either platform, you can rebind um, remap buttons, and if you can remap buttons, you can change stick input like this because as if you're just if you're able to, you know, turn the A button into essentially being the B button, you can change uh, moving 50% of your stick and do 70% uh, of your stick. I mean, it's it's nothing, uh, nothing special. So it would be really good if we could see um, these kind of options available by default in uh, the next generation of consoles. It'd be great if we could see them in this generation of consoles if they were still supporting it. Um, just because, unfortunately, um, thumbsticks aren't handled well uh, for the most part, and they can be wildly different. So you can get a game with circular dead zones, and maybe dead zone options. Maybe it feels great. It's, it's you get options and everything set up well, so you don't even need a script. Um, but then other games you can get um, dead zones like this, like really, really kind of uh, uncomfortable ones, and there's really nothing you can do. It just feels bad to play, and having something like this in the console's accessibility options could counter that, it could, could, and it could retroactively counter things for any kind of backwards compatibility. So, like a lot of these, um, both upcoming, the PlayStation and Xbox, are going to have backwards compatibility for um, all of the current gen's games, and so uh, this would allow all of those games to be retroactively fixed. So if you have a game with a square dead zone, you can counter that into what would feel like a circular dead zone. You can mess with the curves, you can do all that stuff. So uh, I've been rambling for a really long time, but uh, hopefully you've learned something, and hopefully we can maybe see these things formally supported so you know you don't have to get an adapter to, to see these things. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully this has been informative, and uh, yeah, have a great rest of your day.